I hope you enjoyed the Pack and Roll Remix one, but now we're going to have our first race of the marathon. We're going to do uh, Donald Duck Go and Quackers. So you two want to introduce yourself and tell me when to get started. Uh, well, hi. Um, yeah, I'm Mark Kilgrave, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this run. No, it's not my main game, but yeah. Uh, yeah, good luck to Phantasma Mark. Yeah, That's also I can... Uh, okay, yeah, sorry. I can say the same about this. This is not my principal yeah, speed game, can... but okay, yeah, well, sorry. you know, I can say the same about this. Sometimes this is not kind of stuff happens, and we'll have but... Go Senpai or also Fantasma Mask, and this is Donald Duck and Quackers. Any person PSX or any person PS1, let's say any person root for the PlayStation One version of this game. So, would you like to make the countdown, Malkiri? Um. So we start from. Oh. Uh, I think I'm having a problem with my desktop audio. I think it's fine. I'm not streaming my microphone. So, wait, I'm just waiting for instructions. Alright, you two are good to count down now, I believe. Okay, so we start we start from new game, right? Because yeah. Yeah. You know the rules okay. more than I do. Alright, you two are good to count yeah. down now. So Well, okay. the timing starts when you get the control of Donald, but we are gonna do the time yep. since new no, game because it's gonna take between fifteen to twenty seconds. So whatever Balkiti says. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, I'm gonna be commanding this run and well, some stuff that I need to say about this is that this is a game Ubisoft back in 2000 and um, this game got five versions in total, three for home consoles and two for handheld consoles, we're not gonna count the handheld versions and each of these versions are entirely different in many aspects and for example, for these console versions, um, we have the version 1, which is an N64 PC and Dreamcast version. We have the second version, which is a PlayStation version. And the third version that was released two years later for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube. So this is the reason why the categories has named their platforms. So since this is a, play this is a PlayStation 1 version, this can be considered as a unique version. The reason of this is because this version was made by a different development team comparing with the N64, PC, and Dreamcast versions. It has some similarities between stages and all that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of differences between some items and some animations and all that stuff. So the first of all, as you can see, this is like a kind of normal 90, uh, late 90s 3D platformer, there's not so much to say. Um, so the plot of the game is that Daisy was doing a live footage from the evil words of Merlock Pat, but then Merlock discovers her and decides to kidnap her, and now it's time to Donald to go to rescue her. You know, the usual plot of this kind of games. But before he can save her, Donald needs to travel to different parts of the world collecting some energy orbs in order to don't well in, in order to get some energy to use the gyros machine and can be in or in after that he can be traveled to the Evil's more like that so this is the orbs are like this one that you have saw here yeah i just went out of bounds <laughs> just damn on the first stage okay. yeah after one book? Yeah. Yeah, I got that some days ago when I was practicing and also on this early morning when I was practicing the game, I got this also again. So now you're officially the third person who got that out of bounds. The first one but was a Scorpy. Well, the thing is, uh, I just got it for the first time here. Yeah. That's unfortunately, but don't worry. If you got some luck, you're not going to get another out of bounds later. Yeah. In the game. 
And also, this is another problem of the game. In some ways, it's good that Valkyrie got this in order to do a showcase. Because sometimes the game will not recognize the solid parts of the scenario on all the stage. So maybe if you, when you are walking or you fall into some divisions that you cannot see, probably you're going to get an out of bounds. So it's more common to have some out of bounds stuff during the first stages. And also something I forgot to say before I start my run is that for every debt that I got, I'm going to donate one dollar. I don't know if Valkyrie want to do the same with his debts. Um, but I'm going to do that. I wanted to use pay safe card, but... Okay. In my I case, for people. every debt that I got, I'm going to donate one dollar. So if you want to see more donations, just bless in order that I die. Fortunately, for now, everything has been going fine, but I'm not need to get comfy. Because also, another pro one problem with this game, not just only the out-of-bounds stuff, it's that it has some tiny detection boxes. So sometimes, when you're trying to reach something or hit an enemy, you're not going to hit him or you're going to reach that part that you're looking for. And that makes it this game turns a little bit hard on that stuff. I mean, on a casual gameplay, that shouldn't be a big problem, but on speedrunning, this is a big deal, a big issue that this usually has. So, yeah. yeah. Usually, this kind of stuff used to happen sometimes. And with this, we can notice that, U that Ubisoft, from a, a long amount of years ago, doesn't focus into to good games or something like that. So getting back to the category, which is any percent, which is the point of this. Well, um, this game is divided in four warp rooms. And if you have played some Crash Bandicoot games or you have some some bad games, you will associate some stuff with that. So in this case, um, when you well, what I was gonna say, uh, I can't remember. Well, on this game, uh, it's a, a kind of Crash Bandicoot games, but for the Garden children. You know, this is a Disney game. You are playing as Donald. So we have here four war rooms. Each war room has four stages, one unlockable stage, which is an auto scroller, and one boss stage. If we want to reach the boss stage, we need to collect all the orbs from all the four stages. And if we want to unlock the auto scroller, we need to get all the three toys from each stage, making a total of 12 toys. But that's not required for this category, fortunately, because that auto scrollers are annoying. And at the end, you unlock and custom for Donald, which is useless. Yeah. Really? Okay, and I got my first debt. This is the first dollar that I'm going to donate. That's what yeah. I'm for tonight. Yeah, and, already. <laughs> and for example, in other games, when you get hit, obviously you lose a life. But in this game, it's a bit different because if you got so before, when I got hit, uh, Donald gets mad. So this is the mad mud. And when you get hit, you have a little window of three seconds of invincibility. Well, the main will say is three seconds, but I feel that it's like within one to two seconds. When when you are turning into the mad duck pace, you cannot get hit. But if you are in the mad duck pace and you get hit, that means that you're gonna lose a life, as it happened to me. And again, I got attacked to the, thanks to the, that fixed the physics of the game. That was the reason why I got hit. It's weird that you can get hit if you play so well on the this first stages. The problem is going to start on the third warp room, which is one of the most hardest, thanks to all the enemies that appears and also all the, all the traps and all the obstacles you're going to find during the stages. So yeah, that's, that's the point of any person. Just collect four orbs, unlock the boss fight, and move to the next warp room to do the same. And yeah, this is basically any percent. So while we bought Valkyrie and me reached the boss stage, we have an R stage complete. So if the staff wanna say something, this is a good moment. Because we're gonna 
we're not gonna speak for like two minutes. Oh, looks like I'm alone now. All right. Well, don't expect too much from me. I'm not really good at commentating, but yeah, basically first levels are not really hard, but I died three times though. <laughs> I always have, have like a lot of trouble with hitboxes when jumping. It's really annoying as Gus said. Okay, the top there. Okay. You're back. Looks like I like I'm back. But I have a problem. I cannot connect to the mixer server. Okay, never mind, I got in. So well, since I got this issue, I think that I'm not gonna be able to do the race. So I don't know if Valkyrie is gonna continue doing his run and I'm just gonna do the commentary. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that this is better in order to don't have issues because recently when I was streaming like between 2 or 3 a.m. I got these issues. It's weird that I got these issues with my internet but my internet is not in a good condition so sorry guys I'm not gonna be able to do the race and I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. My internet is not in a good condition and I don't wanna continue yeah, like this so I'm just gonna stuff. commentate this. Yeah shit happens but no problem. Well, I appreciate I you even submitting and getting to the marathon itself, but uh, if that's the case, I'm gonna hurriedly switch over, gonna set things up to switch over back to the single game layout so it looks better. Yeah, I'm just gonna access to that. You're definitely welcome to stay in and commentate if you'd like to, and if that's okay with the runner. Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, I'm just gonna open the stream in order to do the commentary. What do I have left the stream? And again, sorry people. I mean, I wasn't hoping that this happens. I already contacted a new ISP, but they haven't come to my 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 grandfather's house to install everything. So I was trying to do my same, my best. And I feel bad since um, I was streaming to Mixer in order to make the stream to Twitch and I wasn't having any kind of issues which it was weird for me because all the time that I was trying to stream to Twitch I lost a huge amount of frames but well, you know, when this kind of stuff happens um, there's anything that fortunately we can do so well, I'm gonna see if this is the correct Mixer link. If it's not, I'm yeah. gonna open another one. Oh, yes, yeah, so, so you're a runner of, the, of this game, but you are not never able to play it. <laughs> so well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Claudia. Have up on <laughs> the channel already. Yep. So well, uh, we got his here the fi the first boss battle with Valkyrie. And well, this is Bernadette's peak. As you have seen, I don't know how he has done the battle, but there's a way to manipulate. Have you manipulated the position of the bird, Balkiri? Uh, no. To no, make I didn't the, know about that. the bird doesn't move. No, I didn't. Know okay, about that. because well, on that part, there's a kind of manipulation that you can do in order to make the, that prevent that the bird moves and save some seconds. So as you have saw, the bird's gonna throw some eggs, there are gonna be some chickens that can up with the egg, you need to defeat the chickens then. 
it will fall, the bit bird will fall down trying to smash you on the floor three times and then you're going to be able to hit the bird and that's not a big, a big deal with the, with the bird. And yeah, this is, uh, that was basically the first war boom. Not a big deal now, we're going to go to the big city. Now the big problems can start here also. Because there are some um, some specific spots, some specific parts that again, again, the game aren't gonna recognize where you, where the Donald is. Because as I said before, uh, this game has so tiny hit boxes that sometimes can make that you can get annoyed so easily. Turn this into a bit hard. Also, you will notice that sometimes Valkyrie, it's like stopping his movement. He's not continually, continuously walking, and it's just thanks to that. And well, unfortunately, he had yeah. that here. And again, this we are gonna get back to the point that I've said about you need to be careful with your movements. So it's it's normal when a runner takes a little amount of time, takes some frames to stop, because again, the game. The game, unfortunately, doesn't drop a lot of your inputs. It's so weird that the game drops your inputs, but again, the physics doesn't help you by a lot. And well, I don't know if... Okay, I think I, I have to say that, so... Since I, since in all the few minutes that I was able to do my run, I just have that one time, I'm gonna donate one dollar for that debt. I'm gonna do my promise in... And this first stage of this uh, city zone, there's no a big deal to complete because as you have seen in previous stages, it's not so hard to find the orbs to, for, to in order to unlock the boss stage. The orb here, it's at the end of the stage, not a big deal. But sometimes, again, we see here when you get a knight thanks to the physics and the control of the game. And now, on the second stage, uh, there's a, in the second stage of this war room, there's a big problem, mostly for the first runners, or the people who start to run the game, here are the roofs, because the orb, it's, a, it's kinda hidden. In the third stage of the first, in the, uh, the first war room, we have saw that we, well, the orb was also hidden, but that's something easy to see, easy to notice, but this is not the situation here. You have saw now that Balki has hit the TNTs, that dynamite. So we need to get used to that because there's gonna be a specific part that we need to hit one of them in order to get the to get the energy orb over here on the during this stage. Also, Valkyrie's PV it's uh, 49.30. Actually, he's on fourth place on this category. My PV was at 50. It's 51.11. I'm in sixth place. And may, yeah, you, maybe um, you. I don't see a camp PV because I died like four times. I don't know. Well, if everything, if I don't die from now on, I can PV, but I don't think so. Because I yes. always struggle with the third wall, you know. Yeah, sometimes uh, getting a PV on this game is hard once you get the sub one hour, and well, you, when you get the sub fifty five minutes, because unless in another game, some deaths can help you. Well, doesn't make you lose a huge amount of time, but this is not the case with this game because in, in other ones checkpoints are not so far away from each time but in this game it's, this is not the case so there are so few checkpoints there between each checkpoint there's a huge distance so also this cannot be something good because if you don't die well if you die when you go so far, far away from a checkpoint and you're close to the next one but you don't reach it you're gonna lose a huge amount of time because as you can see um, there's this is not like in another game that you can find some movement strats this is the only way that you move faster and the regular walking there's any other kind of movement technique so yeah 
So now we are seeing that Valkyrie is on the third stage. Now he is in Lewis Rope Troops. And from this war room, this is the most uh, difficult stage because again, we can get annoyed by the physics. And also, as you can see, there's a lot of traps and a lot of obstacles. So you need to be so careful whenever you're moving. And also, you need to have a good timing otherwise you're gonna lose a huge channel amount of time because in this the cycles of this game works a little bit weird because this, these are not like another regular games where the time the cycles are global and you can manipulate them easily in this case um Whenever you start the game, the cycle you're gonna get. It doesn't matter if you die or if you got out of a stage, you will re-enter to another one. The cycles are gonna be the same. So for some specific spots, for some specific parts, you need to be so careful about where you're gonna move. Otherwise, the game can troll you again for this nice design that the game has. And well, I don't think I'm gonna say something important on, on this next stage. So if staff wanna say something, this is a good moment. Otherwise, just enjoy this game for another two minutes. If you guys have two silent minutes, can I plug something quickly? Sure, go for it. Yeah. All right, so we don't have any new donations to read since the ones we got during Zero Mission, but uh, if you do want to donate, now would be a good time because the estimate for this run is 58, so uh, this run won't be going too much longer. And uh, the next run, Amori has a donation incentive to make it a true ending run instead of an any percent run. But that doesn't have anything, and it needs $50 for the incentive to be met. So if you want to get in your money now, uh, that's definitely something consi to consider putting it towards. However, even if you don't want to put it towards that, there are other uh, there are other things you can put it towards. So for example, we have some bid wars coming soonish, for and the first bid war we're going to have is the character bid war for Rugrats Royal Ransom you can choose between five different characters and yeah uh go back to the run now you can go back to the run so okay now in urban high crisis um we can well we uh what i was gonna say okay i don't remember uh what i forget what i was saying and you, as you can see during all these stages, this is a kind of mix between 2D and 3D stages. So Urban Hack Rises is a kind of 2D stage. And if you think that, well, the problem principle exists on the 3D stages, maybe you are kind of wrong. Because, you know, this is some, this is, uh, how I can say this? Um, even if it doesn't matter if the perspective perspective of the stage, even if it's a 2D or 3D kind, um, the stage is still being hard thanks to the hitbox detections being more hard to do, more mean more hard to complete on the 3D ones. At least it's not that's not a big deal during the 2D stages, and that's something good. And I think I'm gonna watch the restream on Twitch because it looks like I have a huge amount of delay on the mixer. So this is the first boss battle. Sorry, the second boss battle, and this is Beagle Beagle Boy's Tower. He's gonna throw a wrecking ball in the roof. He's gonna do three hits. After that, the working ball is gonna have some issues. Beagle Boy is gonna try to fix it, and that's a mo the moment when Donald can kick him. I don't say in which part because maybe I'm gonna get banned and I don't want it to happen. <laughs> but you will notice what happened watching the gameplay. 
and the first phase nothing bad happens and starting the second phase some parts of the roof are gonna fall down fortunately the pattern here is the same all the time so that's not a big problem and also you will see that Balkit is moving from the left to the right and vice versa and this is because when he when Beagle Boy is gonna throw the dynamite he's gonna throw it directly where old Donald is so it's better to be moving from the left to the right from the right to the left in order that if you are on the right you're moving to the left while the TNT is dropped to the right then well you will understand that and yes, this was the second boss battle. This was Big Old Boy's Tower. Now, officially, Valkyrie has beaten half of the game, or well, half of this category. Yep. You know, it's time to enter to the most hardest part of the game, which is the third warm room. I'm not saying that the last stages are going to be hard. Also, they're hard on their way, but at least... This is not a this is not a yeah. big deal over here since sure there are not so not many anything is a big deal. Well, comparing the third war room with the fourth war room on the fourth war room, and uh, it's a bit hard, but less there are not a lot of enemies or obstacles competing with the third war room. So yeah, this whatever happens is gonna be good, even if. If Valkyrie doesn't get any hit during this war room and also during the boss battle of this war room, maybe the fourth war room can be a good one. And also, you, need, you don't need to be so worried about dying in all, in all this game because you can gain lives easily, as you can see, because now Valkyrie has 20 lives. And Usually, if you catch most of the extra lives and stars that you collect during the game, you will have like 50, between 40 to 50 lives when you reach the end of the game. So yeah, that's not a big deal. So this is um, Haunted Hall, and like this stage helps a bit to understand, well, to know how the next stage are, are going to be, eh? talking about design, enemies, and all of that. Okay, cool. I didn't die. Oh. Oh, so bad internet is again. Oh. Well, hopefully, I usually don't have much trouble with this world, but the third boss is like the worst in. Yeah, sometimes I have really bad luck on the last two levels, so I hope I can do it death this. It would be nice. And yes, bad internet attacked again. 
thanks to this, I feel glad that I have decided to join continue with my run. Otherwise, we have got another freeze here. So getting back to the game, there are not big differences between the first two stages. The most interesting part is going to start on the third stage. And this is curious because for some reason, all third stages from all these war rooms are the most hardest one. Thanks to the thanks to the obstacles that the, yeah. key, the player can find. And also, this is another annoying orb because as I've said before, you need to be so focused during the stages in order to find the orb. Some of them are easy to find, other of them are a bit high. In these situations, the orb was close to a checkpoint. But comparing this with the orb of, from the first stage of the second orb room, for example, if you forgot the orb and then you remember that it was close to a checkpoint, you can easily do a data abuse if you have reached the checkpoint because it was the last of the stage. And you don't lose so many time comparing this with a, like, like if you go out of the stage and then you re-enter to do it again. And now it's time to start with the big nightmare of the runners, of the first, mostly with the first runners of the game and also with the people who is used to run this game, which is Louis' creepy corridor. This is one of the most annoying stages of all the game. And then we're going to have the most annoying one after this. So this is like a pre-nightmare during the game because now we're going to have a lot of holes that Obviously, if we choke, if we do a bad movement, we're going to lose a life. And also, now we are going to see some enemies that, for some reason, has some weird hitboxes. And if you try to hit them, instead of hitting them, you're going to receive some damage. And that's not going to be good. Because up to this point, the milkshakes are going to be a little hard to find. In the game, you can find some milkshakes that if, when you, if you take them when you're on the good mood pace, you're going to enter into invincibility mode. But if you're on the mod, in the mad pace, you're going to get back to the normal mood. So yeah, you need to be careful whenever you're moving. And also... For all the people who saw in the chat, this is not Crash Bandicoot Warp, so don't annoy and throw feedback now. And again, we got um, this curious detail with the orb, because again, the third orb was hidden. And this is one of the most, well, this is the most hardest orb of this. The most hardest to remember, the orb to remember from this warp room. Because as you, have saw, as you have seen there, there was a toy, so it was normal that you will find it if you are going from, for all the toys. So on any person runs during your first runs, maybe it's normal that you can forget that. But in the 112%, which is the full completion of this game, I don't think that you're going to miss it. So yay. Well, I think that a little bit safer than usual, but it, it was decent, I guess. Decent. Yeah, it was so decent, I need to recognize that, even if it was uh, safe. And now it's time to start with the Scorpius fa favorite stage and also the most annoying from all the game, which is Ghostly Path. A lot of runners has a big amount of issues here, again. And you will see why is that a problem. That's not something that you can explain easily. I can say, well, enemies, obstacles, and all that I have said during all the run, I have said all the same stuff, so I don't need to repeat it. But this is that kind of stage that you cannot explain it, that, uh, that you need to play them or at least watch them by itself. And yeah, usually... This stage is a nightmare, thanks to all the obstacles that you can find, because 
again, if we get back to the cycles topics, if we are going into a good pace, we can get some good cycles, but now we can see that Valkyrie has stopped for a bit in some specific parts, so now the cycles are a bit different than the regular pace. So the good part of this is that when you don't catch the cycles correctly, uh, some of them are going to be bad and it's going to make that the runs turns a bit hard and another ones are going to be more easier. So this is kind of another manipulation that you can find during your game, during your run. Because um, on this on these parts, you need to find the, the best options for you, the best cycle that you feel more comfortable to complete the game. So yeah. That's some that's that's a point that makes interesting the run, interesting the runs of this game because otherwise there's anything interesting during this during this title. And yeah, as Shadow says, isn't that bad unless you get how it works? Because maybe this is the most heavily cycle based stage, so if you don't know how the cycle works, you're not gonna get it easily. Okay, so time for the, the third boss. And also, in this last part, Valkyrie has saved some time doing some skips because um, when you find some boxes which has some stars or some books, you can jump over them to jump a little bit higher. And with this, he has a skip uh, down part where, where another enemy was on that specific spot. So he had saved five seconds thanks to this. And it's time to start with the most annoying uh, boss uh, fight, which is Magica. She's gonna free some little enemies, you need to destroy them, and then she's gonna start to attack you. Two fireballs on the first phase, three on the second phase, and four in the fourth phase. And also she's gonna give to the player a meal shake on he finished the second phase, so I'm gonna keep quiet during this stage because this is more harder than it expects. More harder than it looks. Okay, that one really good. Yeah. And yeah, that was the third um, boss battle was the magic ass temple. I don't remember correctly the stage, well, the name of that stage since in my splits, I renamed that as somebody kill her. And yeah, <laughs> three war brooms, time to go to the last of them, which is not a big deal. Oh, okay, he died again, I think. Yeah, this is not really a big deal, but for some reason, I always struggle, so probably playing a little safer than usual again. Oof, I barely make it there.
Well, this one decent. I just had one death, but I was next to the checkpoint, so no big, no big deal. No big deals. Something that I need to mention about uh, these stages is that in some parts you need to play a bit safely because again we got a night by that little enemies that has some masks that again has some weird hitboxes. Yeah, really and weird. Because sometimes when you find a spot when you can hit one of them and you try to hit another one on the same part, you don't hit him and you get hit, which is annoying, Entire, entirely annoying. So, again, maybe I'm going to keep a bit quiet during all these four stages because are also one of the, some of the most annoying ones. And... And this part, it was good that Valkyrie has jumped in order to escape that mask enemy. The reason of that is is because if he got hit by the enemy and then he tried to catch the milkshake, the milkshake was going to get lost. So instead of that, he's going to still be in the mad duck mood. And and this definitely, it's not common to try to beat the stages with the mad mood duck because as you can see, on the invincibility parts, there's a lot of obstacles which can make that you can lose a life again. Okay, that was fine. Just playing a little safer. Always is like a better option here. Safeness is the best option, definitely, for this for the war room. Third stage, I don't think that I need to say something. So, uh, if you don't have anything to say, can I read something quickly? Yep. <laughs> All right, because our very sure. own commentator right here donated five dollars <laughs> saying Pepsi for Donald Duck. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm guessing that's going for watching the cutscenes during Pepsi Man? You're not guessing that. I mean... Yeah, I have added to the Pepsi Man. Okay. Already. Oh, so you added it yourself? Oh, wow, that's advanced. Alright, thank you for the five dollars. That's the less that I can do for now since I have dropped my run, unfortunately. It feels bad. Yeah. I wasn't able to do it. Alright, but thank you for that. Oof. 
I just made it somehow. My game just dropped one jump. And I almost fall into the lava. Yeah, catching that orb sometimes can be a big yeah, nightmare but... because for some reason the game drops a lot the inputs on that on that yeah. spot, mostly the I... jumping ones. I dropped one jump, but thanks God I was spamming the jump button. And now it's time to go to the last stage of the game, which is Ancient Fate. It's not so complicated comparing this with the previous stages, but it's a long one also. It has an interesting stuff at the end of the stage that if you put attention, you will notice that for some reason the soundtrack changes. I don't know why this happens, but it happens. Okay, good. That was good. Also, final boss, and so we are about to finish this. Yeah, so now we're getting closer. Well, not getting closer now. This is the in the end of in, end of the game. This is gonna be the last boss fight, which is Marlag in the ceremonial room. The way that you defeat him is that is when you you well first he's gonna throw some firewalls and well first, first some arrows, then some firewalls, and then he's gonna take down his own shield, and that's the moment the good the correct moment to hit him. And also the time is gonna finish on when he hit Mar Marlux on the for the third time, so time to keep quiet again. Time. Okay. All right. So, stream's a little bit. All right. So, stream's a little bit delayed on Mixer. So, there you just hit time. Your final time was at forty-eight thirty-seven. How much? Forty. Forty-eight thirty-seven. Oh, that was nice. That's a PB, I think. 
Oh, yeah, well, congratulations. Almost uh, one million. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations, so, then. <laughs> yeah, thanks all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, even when my commentary is really bad, I'm not really comfortable with this, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. All right, well, thank you for running. Uh, we're going to go over back to the BRB screen and set up for Amori with Star Smiley. So I'll see you guys then.